Story of Pearl in Plain Chat of Jai In the city of Chanzhou, Jiangsu province, there was a wealthy man named Li Hua who owned a lot of land. However, despite being in his 50s, he had no son, only a daughter named Zhao Hui, who was as beautiful as a flower and precious as jade. Mr. and Mrs. Li loved her dearly. Unexpectedly, Zhao Hui fell seriously ill at the age of 14 and passed away, leaving the home feeling empty and desolate. To fill the void, Li Hua took a maidservant as his concubine, and a little over a year later, she gave birth to a son. Li Hua cherished him like a precious gem and named him Zhuer. As Zhuer grew up, he became strong and handsome, a promising young man. However, he had a simple mind, and at the age of five or six, he still couldn't distinguish between different grains, and his speech was often stuttered and unclear. Despite this, Li Hua dotted on him even more. One year, a blind monk who begged for alms arrived in the city. He claimed to have the ability to reveal the secrets of people's homes and was thought to be a divine figure by the locals. The monk even boasted that he could bring blessings or misfortunes to people. During his alms-seeking rounds, he would specifically ask for large sums of money, and no one dared to defy his requests. One day, the monk asked Li Hua for a hundred strings of coins. Li Hua was hesitant, but offered him ten strings. The monk found it insufficient and became more insistent, gradually raising the amount to 30 strings. He sternly said, you must give me a hundred strings. Not a penny less, Li Hu became angry and took back the money, deciding not to comply with the monk's demands. The monk resentfully said, don't regret it, don't regret it. Shortly after, Zhu suddenly experienced severe pain in his chest. Rolling and tossing on the bed, clawing and kicking, with a pale face, Alarmed, Li Hua hurriedly took 80 strings of coins to beg the monk, imploring him to save Juer's life. The monk coldly laughed, and said, It's not easy for you to bring out so much money. What can a blind monk like me do? Helpless, Li Hua returned home, only to find Juer had already passed away. Grieving deeply, Li Hua filed a complaint with the county magistrate. The county officials arrested and interrogated the monk. The monk vehemently denied any wrongdoing, but the county magistrate ordered his attendants to beat him mercilessly like pounding a drum. They also searched him and found two wooden figurines, a small coffin, and five small flags on him. Enraged, the county magistrate presented the evidence against the monk. Only then did the monk become fearful, repeatedly kowtowing and begging for mercy. The county magistrate paid no attention and ordered his subordinates to beat him to death with sticks. Li Hua thanked the county magistrate and returned home. When Li Hua arrived home, it was already dusk, and he was sitting on the bed talking with his wife. Suddenly, a child rushed in breathless, and said to him, Uncle, why did you walk so fast? I tried my best to catch up, but couldn't. Upon closer look, the child appeared to be around seven or eight years old. Li Hua was astonished, and was about to ask him something, when the child seemed to fade away like smoke then, in the blink of an eye, he climbed onto the bed. Li Hua quickly pushed him down, but he made no sound when he landed on the ground. The child said, Uncle, what are you doing? And just as suddenly, climbed onto the bed again. Li Hua was frightened and grabbing his wife, rushed outside. The child followed them closely, calling uncle and aunt non-stop. Li Hua ran into the room of his concubine and quickly closed the door. When he turned around, the child had already appeared in front of them. Li Hua nervously asked the child what he wanted. The child replied, I am from Suzhou, with the surname Zan. When I was six years old, my parents passed away, and my brother, in-law and sister-in-law didn't want me, so they sent me to live with my grandmother. Once, while playing outside, I was tricked and brought under the spell of a wicked monk, who killed me under a mulberry tree. Since then, I've been forced to serve him. Fortunately you, uncle, cleared my name, and I'm willing to be your son. Li Hua said, humans and ghosts are not the same. How can we coexist? The child replied, just give me a small room with a bed and blanket and feed me a bowl of cold porridge every day, and everything else will be fine. Li Hua agreed to his request. The child was very happy, and settled into the room by himself. 
After waking up in the morning, he moved around the various rooms as if he were Li Hu's biological son. One day, the child heard the cries of Li Hu's concubine mourning for Juer, and asked, How many days has Pearl Juer been dead? The reply was seven days. The child said, It's cold weather, and the body shouldn't have decomposed yet. Send someone to open the grave and check. If the body is intact, I can borrow the corpse to resurrect him. Li Hua was delighted, and followed the child to Pearl's grave. They dug it open, opened the coffin, and saw the body was intact. As Li Hua was grieving, he turned around and found that the child had disappeared. He was puzzled, but ordered the body to be carried back. Once they brought Pearl's body back home and placed it on the bed, they saw his eyes moving. After a while, he asked for water to drink. After drinking the water, he sweated, and after the sweat dried, he stood up. The whole family was overjoyed at Pearl's resurrection, and he had become exceptionally intelligent, unlike before. However, at night, Pearl would lie stiff on the bed, seemingly lifeless, with closed eyes, like a dead person. Everyone was shocked, thinking he had died again. Only when the day dawned would Pearl awaken as if from a dream. Everyone asked him what was happening, and he replied, When I followed the wicked monk, there were two of us, and the other one was named Jezzy Elder Brother. Yesterday, when I couldn't catch up to father, I was saying goodbye to Jezzy behind. He is now in the netherworld, serving Mr. Zhang as an adopted son, and he is quite happy and content. He came last night to invite me to play, and just used a white-nosed yellow horse to send me back. Li Hu's wife asked, Did you see Pearl in the netherworld? He replied, Pearl has been reincarnated. He and uncle have no father-son relationship. He was just helping Yin Zifeng from Jinling to collect a debt of a hundred strings of coins. Originally, Li Hua had gone to Jinling for business and owed Yan Zifeng a debt, but no one knew about it. Li Hua was shocked after hearing this. Li Hua's wife asked, My child, did you see your sister Hui? He replied, I don't know. Next time I go, I will definitely inquire about her. A few days later, the child told Li Hua's wife, Sister Hui is doing well in the netherworld. She married the young master of the Chujian kingdom, and she dresses in jewels and finery. With a retinue of a hundred people making way for her wherever she goes. Li Hua's wife said, Why doesn't she come back to visit her family? The child replied, When one dies, they have no more connections with their living parents. Only if someone describes their past life in detail can they remember. Yesterday, I entrusted Zhang Yuanwei to meet Sister Hui through him. She asked me to sit on her coral bed and conveyed her thoughts to you. However, she seemed to be asleep. I then said, Sister loved to embroider flowers with matching stems during her lifetime. Once, she accidentally pricked her hand with scissors and blood dripped onto the satin. Sister embroidered it into red clouds. Mother still hangs it on the wall by her bed, and thinks of you whenever she sees the satin. Sister, have you forgotten? Hearing this, Sister Hui remembered her past life, and said tearfully, When I see my husband, I will definitely tell him that I want to go home and visit my mother. Li Hu's wife asked when she would come, and the child said he didn't know. One day, the child told Li Hu's wife, Sister Hui is about to arrive. Prepare more food and wine for the retinue. After a while, he ran back into the house and said, Sister Hui is here. He moved a chair to the main room and said, Sister Hui, please sit down and rest for a while. Don't be too sad, but no one else could see her. The child led the family to burn paper money and offer wine outside, then returned and said, the retinue and carriages have temporarily left. Sister Hui said that she had a green silk quilt that was once burnt by a candle and had a pea-sized hole in it. She asked if it was still there. Li Hu's wife replied, It is. She took it out from the box. The child said, Sister Hui asked me to place it in the room where she used to live. She's tired now and wants to rest. She will talk to mother tomorrow. The daughter of the neighbor Zhao family used to be Zhao Hua's close friend, who used to embroider together. That night, she suddenly dreamed that Zhao Hui appeared with a headscarf and a purple shawl, just like she was in life. Zhao Hui said to Zhao's daughter, I'm no longer in the mortal world. 
Reuniting with my parents is no different from rivers and mountains meeting. I want to borrow your body to talk to my family. Don't be afraid. As soon as the day broke, Zhao's daughter suddenly collapsed while talking to her mother. After a while, she slowly woke up and said to her mother, Zhao Hui, after only a few years of separation, you have turned completely white. Zhao's mother was shocked and asked, have you gone mad? The daughter said goodbye to her mother and went out. Zhao's mother suspected there was something else going on and followed her. She followed her all the way to Li Hua's house. Zhao's daughter entered the house and embraced Li Hua's wife, crying bitterly. Li Hua's wife was bewildered and didn't understand the reason. Zhao's daughter said, I came back yesterday, and I was very tired and didn't have time to talk to mother. As an unfilial daughter, I left both parents halfway and made you miss me. How can I atone for this? Li Hu's wife immediately understood and burst into tears, then asked, I heard that my child is enjoying prosperity and wealth now, and I am very happy about that. But you are from the royal family, how can you come here? Xiao's daughter said, my husband and I have a strong affection for each other, and my in-laws are very fond of me. They are not bothered by my ugly appearance. Zhao Hui used to have a habit of supporting her chin with her hand. And Zhao's daughter demonstrated the gesture, looking and acting just like Zhao Hui. A short while later, the child ran in and said, the entourage to pick up sister Hui has arrived. Zhao's daughter stood up to bid farewell to Li Hua's wife, collapsed on the ground, and lost consciousness. After a while, she slowly regained her senses. A few months later, Li Hua fell ill, and his condition worsened day by day. Despite seeking medical treatment and taking medicine, nothing seemed to work. The child said, it seems this is inevitable. I'm afraid there is no cure. Two ghosts are sitting at the head of the bed, one holding an iron rod, and the other holding a four or five foot long hemp rope. I have been pleading with them day and night, but they won't leave. Li Hua's wife cried as she prepared funeral clothes for Li Hua. At dusk, the child rushed in and said, everyone else in the house should stay away for now. Brother-in-law is here to see uncle. After a while, the child clapped his hands and laughed. Li Hua's wife asked why he was laughing, and he said, I'm laughing at those two little ghosts. When they heard brother-in-law was coming, they got scared and hid under the bed like turtles pulling in their heads. After a while, the child said, brother-in-law has left, and the two ghosts have been taken away, bound by the leather strap of a horse's neck. Father's illness will soon improve. Brother-in-law said he will go and ask the king for a hundred years of life for his parents. The whole family rejoiced, and that night, Li Hua's illness did indeed improve. A few days later, he made a full recovery. After Li Hua recovered, he hired a teacher to teach the child to read. He was very intelligent and at the age of 18, he passed the county examination and entered the county school. He could still speak of things in the netherworld. When he saw people in the village who were sick, he could point out where the ghosts were causing harm. By using fire to burn something, the patient would often recover. However, one day, he suddenly fell seriously ill, with his skin turning blue-purple. He said it was because the ghosts were punishing him for revealing their secrets. From then on, he never spoke of anything related to the netherworld again.